Hello, everybody. Oh, great, great. Okay, so I suppose that everybody is here already. And we can start our webinar. I hope. Well, at least we have some time before we will start the main part of our presentation. So everybody that want to join us will be able to do so. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alexey. Uh, I'm a pre-sale engineer at Streamlabs, and today I will conduct this webinar. Um, I would like to wish everyone health and patience in the current era of pandemic. Now we all need to support each other and protect our loved ones and friends. And the topic of our webinar today is the multi-screen and multi-rec working in clouds. We are going to talk about what does exactly working in clouds mean in common and what does it mean for broadcasting industry. We will convince that our products are ready for this, I'll look up for some future enhancements, and in the end, uh, I will answer your questions. If you have any technological problems with video or sound, please let us know in the chat. Uh, in parallel, uh, in chat there will be a vote. Uh, we'll be glad if you find time to take part in our polls on the subject of monitoring. Uh, it really matters. Uh, your opinion really matters for us. Um, now I will switch off my camera so that it will be more convenient for you to watch the presentation. So, few words about uh, our company. The company started as a developer and manufacturer of circuit boards for input and output of TV signals. And now Streamlabs is internationally renowned software developer for the broadcast industry. We have experience in many areas, main of them are monitoring and compliance recording, video surveillance, playout, and ninja systems, but we also work with many others, including fast-growing AI features for our software. We are proud of numerous installations around the world. Um, our offices are located in Russia and Latvia, and we also have representatives in USA, Latin America, and India. Um, at this difficult times we still provide our technical support to our customers as it used to be supporting and developing our existing products and developing new solutions evaluating market needs let's talk about <laughs> flying in clouds uh, everybody dreamed about it in childhood don't you but what does it mean to work in the cloud basically it means that you can use hardware provided by operators in any configuration you may need in a virtual space, installing and using uh, there your software. Quite simple. Uh, just rent equipment and save money on cost of equipment and personnel that will maintain it. Of course, it's a very simplified description, so let's also define what types of clouds can be. On current slide, you can see Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> missed the slide. On the current slide, you can see three types. Uh, public cloud, private cloud, and the hybrid cloud. Public cloud means that you are using only hardware from cloud service providers like Google, Azure Cloud, and others. Uh, private cloud is a completely isolated system. Companies can build such system on their own equipment or use resources from service providers and hybrid clouds combine both options. Everything sounds good, but what about broadcasting industry? How we can use clouds for our needs? Companies on the bleeding edge of uh, industry usually migrate in cloud only their broadcasting part. 
because cloud cannot provide, unfortunately, you with specialized specific equipment used at head-end station. Therefore, we still have head-end and production outside of clouds, but using of broadcasting clouds grows as we speak. Uh, we can analyze and code, transcode, and use and play out every signal that could be delivered in cloud. In addition, it is a good idea to move your media file storage with thousands of hours of your content to the cloud. It's much more efficiently as your files will be stored near your playout. That means no delay and you can save money on hardware and its maintenance. Uh, what are advantages and disadvantages of using broadcast part in the cloud? Well, main advantages are economy, security, reliability, and ease of access. But we also made some difficulties on our cloud paths, such as uh, loss of direct, direct access to equipment that make it a bit difficult to monitor state of your services, so that you need some viable solutions for monitoring and control recording of your content. Of course, there are more pluses and we just uh, need to figure out how to minimize the risks and obtain secure and automated system without direct access to it. Uh, I'm still a salesman, so <laughs> sorry, but I definitely need to tell you about our products. And also, we will look up how our developers improve them to see it work in clouds. Uh, please meet our flagship stream, multi-screen. It can provide monitoring and quality control of the central and regional network installations uh, or hubs. Server can be configured and designed for any specific task at hand. For example, to control terrestrial, satellite, or cable broadcasting, transport streams, or baseband signals. At the same time, you can have ASI inputs or control OTT streams like HLS. Multi-screen supports various type of input formats depending on your needs and can be flexibly configured, enhanced with different types of supported capture cards like Blackmagic Decklink or Mellanox that will allow you to expand features of software. In general, the system can be divided into two components. First, the monitoring mode based on deep analysis of parameters for input signal and visual mode. Uh, when pictures are gathered in a mosaic on a display, you can also see an example of mosaic uh, on the right of, uh, side of the slide. An important distinction from other multi-viewers is that our system allows not only to capture and display the signals on the video wall, but also to control a number of various important parameters. It provides an intelligent analysis and more than three dozen different parameters. These are numerous measurements of quality of service for transport streams, including metrics under tier 290. At the same time, there are metrics for quality of experience, like regular freezing, black screen, blocking picture, and there is also monitoring for audio level compliance, volume normalization control. Also, the system has a module to, for receiving SNMP traps from various third party devices. Another thing is metadata control. You can display and control data from AIT table, as well as EPG, teletext, subtitles, and SCTE marks. A um, bit more about visual mode. It consists of a states panel. This panel shows the signal states. The color of each element may vary and depends on a certain status of the channel. A uh, static mosaic screen is quite a common thing, I suppose, but it has some additional features which can be configured in a built-in graphic editor. For example, it allows to display alarm history, look up stream parameters, overlay teletext and subtitles, and also show EBG data or SCTE 104 or 35 marks. 
This allows the operator to identify a problem faster, especially when he works with a large number of screens with mosaics. Dynamic visualization in case of penalty screen mode, uh, if errors uh, or an outage occurs on any service, it will be shown in the penalty screen automatically. At the same time, color code field with information appears under the image with this name of detected alarm event. Also, operator can manually send the service on the penalty screen for fast lookup. And finally, we can encode the representation of a whole mosaic and stream it over the network. Hope you are not tired yet because I have finished the overview of our multi-screen. And now we will talk about some specific tasks uh, that monitoring and recording software should provide to work in cloud freely. Uh, it should be able to work in isolated environment without physical access, receive and control streams by IP protocol. The main protocol in such an environment is cloud. And visualize stream or mosaic everywhere as so how those a cloud generate and send alarms to remote clients, display information via remote interfaces. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, IP protocol is the main part when we are talking about cloud services. This is a new challenge for broadcasters, how to deliver head and SDI signal into the cloud. And there comes new standards, ST2022-6 and ST2110, the code SDI over IP. Um, these are new but extremely useful formats that allow you to deliver uncompressed SDI signal over IP. And the beginning of the transition to media over IP was laid down in an SMPTE ST2022 standard. High definition video formats with light bandwidth need for flexible signal delivery and easy deployment of distributed broadcasting. All this has become the major signs for moving uh, of uncompressed video to IP channels. Now there are several standards for transmission of professional video over IP. One of them is mentioned SMPTE 2022-6 which describes the encapsulation of an SDI signal and the new ST2110 with some significant improvements that also is great format for cloud surfing. And for TV centers and studios using SDI over IP 2022-6, we have developed uh, an integration with Mellanox Rivermax network adapter. Using a high-performance network card driver, Stream Multiscreen is able to receive and de-encapsulate 2022-6 signals. Based on the existing TCP IP protocol, ST2022 essentially just converted SDI video and audio to batch data, transmits over IP networks and converted back to SDI. The other side of the coin is that to transmit such large amounts of data over all networks with low bandwidth, the data was compressed by MPG2. SMPTE ST2110 was developed based on the previous ST2022, but it has uh, important enhancements. First, to make more efficient use of bandwidth, audio, video, and data are separated into different streams. This allows the user to send and receive only the necessary data, not the entire package. Like the ST2022, the ST2110 uses standard computer hardware. But thanks to advances in technology, it's now possible to transmit uncompressed video over 10 gigabits networks. As with the ST2022-6 standard, we support parameter control, visualization, and encoding in any available format for recording and viewing by other systems, including multi-rec. The next necessary requirement that monitoring software needs when working in cloud system is to have a convenient interface for displaying uh, information to external users. In the central areas of the monitoring, uh, the main methods are the visual display panel. 
they are usually directly connected to the multiviewer's video cards. But what if the monitoring system needs to be placed in the cloud? In this case, the only way to deliver the video signal from the system will be encoded stream for playback it on the destination device. This can be a separate set-top box, mini computer, or a panel with smart TV video players. However, the standard of the transmitted stream should be publicly available for most applications. The stream multi-screen source encoder model has long been a standard feature for forming a mosaic or restreaming and incoming signal. Previously, we only supported the following output transport types, NDI and MPGTS. Now we have added two more, HLS and SRT, which are most popular when transmitting video over non-public networks. HLS is an adaptive HTTP-based streaming protocol that sends video and audio content over network into small TCP-based streaming media segments that are reassembled at their destination. Um, the cost of deploying HLS is low because it uses existing TCP-based networking technology. But because HLS uses TCP, it works on a quality over latency principle. So latency can be high. Uh, the advantage of HLS is that it's designed to adapt to different network conditions. Different versions of the stream are sent at different resolutions and bit rates. Um, viewers can choose whatever stream quality they want. HLS also supports multiple audio tracks, which means your stream can have multiple language tracks from which users can choose the only one they want. Other benefits include support for closed captioning, metadata, uh, digital rights management, and even embedded advertisements um, in the not too distant future. Secure HTTP streaming is support as well as MD5 and SHA hashing algorithms for username and password authentication. HLS streaming in the logical and most popular way to transmit signals in the cloud, since it is a universal format available for all players and devices that work with video over public and non-public internet networks. We have made it support not only the multi-screen input, but we are also able to form it ourselves for transmitting mosaics and incoming signals. Multi-screen like multi-rec can work with HLS encrypted streams using AES-128. With the distribution kit of the new stream multi-screen, web server components are installed and automatically configured. If desired, you can further customize the EES settings from the system itself. In the multi-monitor settings, an HLS link is automatically generated for each encoded stream, and it's possible to additionally adjust the segment size and adjust the square of segments for deletion. When adding HLS into multi -rec, the system analyzes the master playlist highlights the profiles and allows you to add any of the profiles to the recording. The record can still be in its original quality as well. We can transcode it and overplay with a date or, or text. Uh, since OTT broadcasting is becoming more developed segment in TV industry, we are trying to keep it up to date and improve algorithms for quality monitoring. Talking about OTT in the clouds, we can ensure control of OTT service on each step of its creation, placing multi-screen software on each node and monitoring every possible problem, generating actual and useful alarms for troubleshooting. Um, of course, each system is unique, but multi-screen is flexible enough to fit all your needs um, another protocol, another new protocol that we started using for streaming mosaics and incoming signals is SRT, Secure Reliable Transport. 
SRT is a rising streaming star. The protocol provides high quality video and audio with low latency over an unreliable public internet. In fact, you can control the amount of latency and eliminate problems such as jitter due to packet loss in bad networks. SRT also makes it easier to bypass firewalls without the help of an IT specialist and is also cost effective when displayed in an existing network infrastructure. In addition, SRT offers secure streaming with 256-bit AES encryption. Mosaic SRT streaming, in this case, is the most modern and cost-effective method, considering its use in networks with non-guaranteed delivery. We know how to create it ourselves to transmit the mosaic and incoming signals. In future versions, an implementation of incoming SRT streams will be added. Multiscan itself generates an encrypted SRT stream with an encoded keyword. Both AES 128 and 256 encryption algorithms are supported. In the multi-monitor settings, an SRT link is automatically generated for each encoded stream. You can additionally configure the parameters of the signal delivery quality. A distinctive feature among other protocols is delivery over non-guaranteed networks and encryption. The new standard is widely used by live broadcast reporters as well as remote uh, production studios. By this analogy, it seems logical to use SRT transmission as the ideal way uh, to deliver a mosaic of disturbing events from a cloud-based monitoring system such as multi-screen. Since we are talking about the possibilities of encoding streams and mosaics based on multi-screen, I want to tell you about our new experience that we have implemented in both of our products. And this is about using hardware encoding. Of course, this is more about classic server systems, but uh, there are virtualization options where the ability to add hardware capacity takes place. For example, adding a graphics card as a component of the virtual machine to use its resources in the performance of the cluster system. In the stream multi-screen functionality, we can use two technologies for using hardware resources for decoding at once, Intel QuickSync and NVIDIA CUDA. For encoding, in addition to the two mentioned, AMD is added. In Multirec systems, you can use CUDA cores for encoding and decoding, expanding the number of recorded channels. Let's move on to the other high-tech innovations of Streamlabs broadcast monitoring software. Relatively recently, a new direction of development has appeared in our company, uh, machine learning. During this time, we have successfully completed projects in telemedicine based on the use of artificial intelligence. Our data scientists also did not pass by our main direction, monitoring. And we have incorporated artificial intelligence into one of the most controversial subjective assessments of broadcasting, the presence of compression, macro-blocking, and artifact control. When evaluating most questions often arise that relate to how noticeable compression artifacts should be for the eyes of an ordinary viewer. From simple examples of interreference artifacts to macro blocking, we decided to compile over a million datasets for machine learning using the convolutional neural network mechanism. The neural network selects a set of weights to correctly identify artifacts from the numerous datasets available. Since we are a television company with numerous clients, it was not difficult for us to compile a database of various artifacts. These artifacts that appear due to problems with content delivery, as well as macro blocking, arising from recompression. 
We have provided the metric that determines the artifacts with a presetting of the sensitivity level. This functionality can be seen in the next new version of Stream Multiscreen. When we leave the system at a remote unattended site, we need to be sure that the monitoring system does not fall down due to incorrect system actions or human factors. Um, also, if our servers are located over a distributed network and we only get a display of mosaics from the cloud and a status bar of statuses, the question arises. How can we quickly restart the system of the entire virtual server without going to it? We present you health monitor for stream multi-screen called MS Guard. Running on the server together with stream multi-screen, it monitors its performance. Whatever happens on the server, it will not allow the application to close. If it de detects a fall in decoders or auxiliary processes, it will restart them itself. If you want to reboot monitoring or mosaic remotely without any unnecessary actions, well, no problem. Go to multi-monitor and restart multi-screen on the server as a whole. Working as a service of the operating system, it will easily start on its own at startup and will not forget to track that your multi-screen has started. If multi-screen is overloaded with a large number of tasks and system cannot start correctly with a given configuration, this is not a problem either. No need to reinstall everything, just restart multi-screen from MS Guard in safe mode. This functionality will allow you to leave the system in an unattended segment without fear that will stop at some point and will not work. The centralized management functionality of multi-monitor and MS Guard enables quick configuration and also system restart. One of the playouts that can be placed in the cloud is vPlay. Being in the same infrastructure, we have advanced integration based on API. When two systems are located in a connected virtual segment, in addition to calculating data from the received stream, we can accept and process metadata that relates to the actual operation of the playout. Those together with the stream multi-screen processes the metadata of the received signal in parallel. We can receive information about the behavior of the playout itself. This is very convenient from the point of view of monitoring and TV broadcasting. On one visualization screen, you can see the received stream from vPlay. The received transport stream received by the end user, as well as data on the operation of the video server itself. Consider a simple case. You accepted information from three sources. First, stream with vPlay, second, satellite feed, and the third, API data from vPlay. On the multi-screen mosaic, we see a message coming from the vPlay API that the next clip is running. The image from the video server visually confirmed the change of the clip. According to the information from the die programmed from the EIT, of the transport stream, we do not see any changes. The duty shift fixes an error in compiling an EPG from the content provider. In addition to the data provided by the replay API, we can get the following types of data. Current clip, next clip, player status, drop frame count, countdown, SCTE 104 and 35 message generation as run. Uh, for example, on the slide, we see two messages about splicing with vPlay. Speaking about the Multirec system, we can safely say we have been ready for the cloud for a long time. Stream Multirec, in addition to the usual placement on cloud resources, is ready to work as a service. In the near future, it will be, become possible to use it by subscription on one of the major projects. The modern web interface on the system has long been distinguished by rights. Each user can be granted to access both servers and storages.
And the system interface is modern and finds a positive response even among the most demanding users. Convenient player control, mosaic mode, support for playback without transcoding on the Chromium and Gecko browser engines. All this shows how efficient the player is in the interface. The architecture allows the use of network storages in local segments and on cloud resources by using right priorities. Any N plus M redundancy configuration is also now possible. Summarizing the above, we can say that we are ready to work in the cloud. We are already taking further steps to make our products more convenient to use. Technology moves forward and familiar interfaces are becoming obsolete. We want to prepare a good gift to our customers, a completely new product that will take all the best from the multi-screen and multi-rec and will become our flagship from next year. The current products will evolve with it. Centralized analyzer management, flexible modern interface, reporting and analytics tool, modernized state visualization, monitoring the availability rate of your service, control of any devices, all this and much more you will soon see in new unique product from Streamlabs. Uh, follow our company news. Uh, tomorrow, we invite you to the next webinar on our best playout for the cloud we play. And now my presentation is over and I will be happy to answer your questions if you have them later or we won't have enough time to answer during the current session, then you can always send them to our mail info at streamlabs.com. Actually, we have a lot of questions now uh, and I think it is very good. Um, <laughs> it's great, <laughs> really. For me, it means that the cloud is a very important thing and our customers are interested uh, in it. So, uh, can you answer this question? Oh, of course, of course, we can ask. Uh, okay, uh, first question is, when is a new product planned for release? Uh, well, the new product is, uh, the first versions of the product are scheduled for release in the first quarter of 2021. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the next question is a technical question. <laughs> uh, is it possible to run multi-screen on a weak workstation or a laptop? Mm, well, yeah, without any problems, I suppose. <laughs> At least you can always buy a discrete GPU for a weak server, as we mentioned, our uh, hardware encoding options. Uh, and in the case of a laptop, for example... Mm -hmm. um, one more question. Um, I think you told about it, no, uh, but... Uh, can you repeat, please, what products uh, use artificial intelligence? What are our products? Hello, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now I can hear you. Now you well. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I heard the question. Just my microphone suddenly stopped. Well, in addition to the fact that we have already talked about the new option for detecting artifacts in multi-screen, artificial intelligence is used um, in two projects in the telemedicine and transcription project also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understandable. And uh, one more technical question. Uh, what determines the choice of a card for a GPU encoding? Well, the choice of a video card is primarily based on the number of CUDA cores, at least of GPU cores, or probably on AMD, they code uh, in a different way. Uh, but the amount of video cards memory, well, it's a secondary option. The primary is number of uh, GPU cores. Mm -hmm. um, the next question is so very important, I think. Uh, how is multi-screen supposed to be licensed in the cloud? Mm, we have moved away from physical keys a long time ago. Also, we still support them on older versions of software, but now uh, it's proposed to use the Streamlabs licensing server which can be located remotely and be accessible from local and public networks. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's understandable. Uh, the next question is pretty nice, I think. Uh, are there <laughs> multi-screen alerts via WhatsApp? Um, sad, but no, because oh. WhatsApp uses a prioritary protocol. But for messenger notifications, we have Telegram integration. Through this service, you can receive alarm messages, but also query the system about the history of alarms for a period. And uh, how about the number of channels? How many UHDTV channels um, you can render on the server? Well, UHD rendering is a very resource intensive. Uh, it's recommended to use only GPU resources for working with UHD. If you want to visualize all channels on one display, then you can use the cascading functionality. We support high-speed NDI protocol on both input and output. If necessary, you can create multiple mosaics and send them over NDI to one common composite display panel, where each mosaic will be part of the common one. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, um, excuse me. is it possible to export alarm events from the database? Yeah, sure. We support the option to export alarm events in XML format. This can be done through the multi-monitor application. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty easy. Uh, next question. What does N plus M redundancy mean in multi-rec? Any configuration can be? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We were not wrong. The system provides for the assignment of recording priorities. If you have multiple backup servers, you can use them to backup high priority channels only. Thus, if any number of servers will fall, the redundant server will record the highest priority channels first mm -hmm. and then lower priority. Mm -hmm. um, the next question um, Can you use a single database for multi screen and for multi rec? Well, you can use one instance of SQL Server for multi-screen and multi rec databases, while inside this instance each application will still create its own database, but they will not interfere with the operation of both applications. Mm -hmm. um, there are some questions uh, more in the chat. Uh, Mm, hello, could you please send me a link to this presentation for my call? Yeah, of course, we can <laughs> send you a link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How to use replay? I will talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> You're welcome on our tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow webinar about uh, Cloud Radio solutions. Um, uh, is the licensing model per input or per server, or a combination of both? It depends on the all software. Mm, what software we are talking about? It's multi-screen, multi-rec, or probably we play because uh, it's a different software and licensing a bit differs in each. So need to determine which software we are talking about. Usually in multi-screen we use licensing per service and quality also matters. Uh, if we are talking about WePlay, well, then we license outputs. I think that's all. I can see uh, any other questions. <laughs> Too much talking, people don't know what to ask after. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, at least I can see that people participate in our poll, and it's really cool because your opinion matters for us. Yeah, I, I cannot see Elsa any more questions. Uh, uh, one more question. Can we check for multi-rec? Does it support external schedule for stop-start recording? 
Yeah, we also support uh, integration of multi-screen and multi-rack. For example, you can configure it in uh, a chain uh, in such a way when an alarm appears in multi-screen, uh, the record is starting. So you create a special uh, recorder in multi-rack and it starts to record only when alarm occurs. So yeah, it will also stop when alarm will disappear. So yeah, it's possible. And uh, also, uh, looks like audio problem, uh, but I still will continue. <laughs> and also, yeah, we have a schedule in Multirec. Can we use the recorded file from Multirec to play back on Bplay? Uh, yes, you can record uh, any uh, files and later you can download it from Multirec and use it to play back in Bplay. No problem. <laughs> yeah, so Alex. <laughs> so we didn't have time to take more questions. It's not a problem because we still continue and you can ask any question now. Um, Mr. CJ uh, wrote, my question was about licensing model for multi-screen. Um, maybe can you repeat? Um... Yeah, for multi-screen we can, um, well, we not can, but we use um, the um, licensing model in such a way. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to determine which type of signal we use. Uh, I mean, not the type of signal, but the quality of signal. Yeah, it matters. So uh, we are licensing multi-screen per each service. So uh, when you get the signal into multi-screen, you already can uh, use the analyze module of it already. So we uh, usually license per each service. I see that uh, Mr. Tomek asks, uh, what is minimal requirements for 20-channel multi-viewer? Uh, it really depends on which type of signal do you use. Is it uh, IP channel, so probably HDI, um, but for 20 channels, uh, I do not suppose it will be a very powerful configuration. And also, is this uh, SD quality channels? Oh, okay, I see IP, uh, HD channels, HLS. Well, you will need for 20 channels, um, well, about two CPU with 10 cores, uh, about uh, 48 uh, operative memory, and also you will need some GPU, at least to use these CUDA cores that I have mentioned before. So NVIDIA GeForce um, for 20 channels, I suppose it will be enough uh, even with GTX uh, 1050 Ti. Uh, Mr. Ali asks, uh, is it possible to have small application to control multi-screen, only to make um, any of small windows full screen just controlling visual monitoring? Uh, small application for visual monitoring. Well, unfortunately, no. We have, of course, this small application called MS Guard, but it's all about controlling the state of multi-screen. If you want to use any kind of viewing, so you will need to use our multi-monitor application. But I will not say that it's a very large application, really. Uh, I suppose it's about uh 14 megabytes if i'm right so it's really small you can install it almost everywhere and use it to view um i can see also the next question about uh srt and why we need to use it in place of hls uh well it's more stable you know hls was Mm, used for 
mobile devices, the first uh, destination uh, uh, mobile devices, but SRT is most reliable, most modern protocol. Why? Because it's more stable, it's more secure. If you are using it uh, on low bandwidth networks, it will ensure that you can lower that jitter that could appear. So it's better to use SRT instead of HLS. Now I can see that Eldar is also answering. <laughs> Uh, automatical say stream alteric working. Mm, you mean uh, how to ensure the stable working of Malteric? Uh, this is your question. Or you mean how to record some stream in automatic way? Mr. Alex, can you repeat your question, <laughs> please? <laughs> <laughs> there is a period until we know. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. When you create a recorder in Multirec, um, you can set two preferences. First uh, is how long your video will be stored there, for example, one day or one month probably, yes. And the second option is a quota. Uh, you can just set up uh, a space on your hard drive to uh, use for this particular recorder. So when uh, this uh, free space uh, will be to its end, uh, there are two options. If you will set up to auto clear option, then just all the records will be deleted and you won't create it. And if you will not set up this option, then a record will just stop and that's all. Sometimes you may need this. I can see that also two questions are pending. <laughs> um, Mr. Alex uh, asks again, um, can I set the time of a, of a saving file? Mm, do you mean uh, when the file will be saved? Um, I'm not sure if I understand it right, but uh, if you are setting the record, uh, well, you can schedule the time when the record will be enabled. For example, you need to record only from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah, you can schedule it up and yeah, the stream will be recorded only at that time. Uh, also, you have export options in our Multirec web interface, so you can also set up a schedule of export uh, the files. So when the record will be completed, the export will start. Uh, probably you will need some transcoded files with uh, data or time or both, uh, and also lower quality just to download it and view fast. So, yes, you have some viable options for it. Uh, Riot uh, looks I'm not connected. So what do you mean? At least we can see your text. Because when you start to record, we have a lot of files and folders. Uh, well, no, right? we cannot hear you. Oh, I understand the question now, uh, the duration of a file. You mean how large the one file record that will be? No, unfortunately, you cannot set it manually. It's uh, already set by developers and we cannot change this because uh, they need this uh, 
uh, size of the files to ensure that when you transcode them into one large file, everything works, works smoothly. So unfortunately, you will not be able to change um, the size of the files. You mean TS files in uh, destination folder. They are always uh, 64 megabytes large. I'm not sure, but probably it's just disabled in webinar and only text messages could be seen. Uh, oh, okay, you already text your question. Mm, the question is, uh, the question from Mr. Ali, does multi-screen have API? Well, usually uh, everything regarding multi-screen server uh, is getting by third-party devices by SNMP, the only way, at least for now. And in future, yes, uh, we plan to integrate in Elzo. Okay, Mr. Alex, you can ask any questions. I can see that Riot Elza uh, have typed, well, it's not a question, I suppose. You want to uh, try to use Maltrek in cloud, I, if I uh, am I right? Before uh, we used ISI interface, now it's SDI, what's next? Well, I suppose, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, what exactly uh, you will use, but uh, we mentioned today about uh, two new ways to stream SDI over IP, and I suppose that this is a future uh, because you can use them with the same hardware only uh, by a new network adapter and that's all and you can just uh, stream your SDI signal uh, into the cloud. So I suppose this is the future. Yeah, Mr. Alex, uh, I can repeat you. Uh, as I understand uh, your question, uh, you mean that new technologies arises, yes? And you are using ASI interface, uh, now SDI interface, and what will we use in the future? So we have two new protocols, SMT 2022-6 and 21-10. So they use this technology that allows you to transport uncompressed SDI signal from your head and station uh, over IP. So if we are talking about clouds, uh, in cloud, unfortunately for now, we can use only IP protocol. Um, that's because cloud cannot provide you any hardware that you may use in your head end. So we are using IP protocol. And so I suppose that SDI over IP, these two protocols that I have mentioned before, these are the future protocols.
Of course, I don't know how will evolve uh, clouds in future. Probably uh, in years future, you will be able to use um, any specific broadcasting hardware uh, available on request from <laughs> Google or Azure. But for now, unfortunately, we can use only IP protocol. So we need this SDI or IP protocol. And it sells are quite comfortable. You just don't need some additional hardware. Only one special network adapter. Uh, you mean to receive or transport this stream? To receive, it still be the same SDI on input. So you will receive SDI on input and on output, uh, you will use just a regular uh, RG45 interface <laughs> for the network adapter. Yeah, but for receive, yes, the same as on SDI. Nothing will change in this. That's why I'm talking about that you don't need any uh, additional hardware, some specific or very expensive. Yeah, that's right. But to ensure that you uh, will be able to transmit the signal, uh, you will still need this uh, network adapter. Um, as we mentioned down, uh, earlier in our webinar, uh, at least in multi-screen, uh, we have integrated Mellanox uh, River Max cards. Uh, you can also read about them a bit more. But uh, in fact, uh, it's still a network adapter that can just use a wider bandwidth. Uh, so basically, yeah, protocol will change, not the cable. You will use the same cable on the input. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's really good because you can use the same topology. Our time is almost over, uh, so if you uh, have any other questions, uh, we are happy to answer them right now. <laughs> Please feel free to write them to the chat. The most active users are already asking their questions. <laughs> yeah, I see. Well, as I can see, nobody. Oh, okay. Another one question from Mr. Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You will be able to download this record, I suppose. I think it will be in our channel on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. as a And uh, you always can uh, write a letter to our uh, team, to our support, and uh, we will give you a link. Yeah, it's also a viable option. And if you will have any questions regarding our products, we are always happy to hear you. You can also call us, we can have an online meeting, and we will discuss every question that you may have. Uh, and, well, I suppose if there are no many um, questions and then we will finish our webinar we will be happy if you have a look uh, on our other products we can be useful for your work so and we welcome you to join us tomorrow thank you for your attention and take care about yourself thank you and goodbye <laughs>